Hi, I'm Larry Parman with the firm of Parman and Easter Day. And I'm Jerry Shiles with the firm. And we were sitting around talking earlier about our experience at the recent Alzheimer's conference earlier this week. We attended that conference, which was held in Norman, Oklahoma, and they were kind enough, and because of his reputation, to invite Jerry to be on the experts panel to talk about some of the legal issues that come up in connection with taking care of Alzheimer patients and uh, the different challenges that family members have when they're confronting that illness. And uh, there were a number of things that were asked on that panel discussion, a number of things that were talked about. Uh, but one thing that I just that occurred to me that you and I were discussing in the hallway afterwards was the fact that sometimes when a, when a child moves in with a parent, uh, when there's not clarity about who's responsible to do what, and how expenses are to be shared, sometimes that child develops a sense of entitlement about the overall estate plan. What's been your experience with that? <clears throat> that that's been a common problem, uh, one we see quite often. What will happen is, is the one child will move in with the parent or, or the parent will move in with the child and there won't be clear communications with the other family members and that one child begins to feel like the resources are his or her resources to use and problems arise. Uh, we had a case just recently where the daughter moved in. The son was actually the agent, the power of attorney agent, but the daughter moved in and we found out that the daughter had started using mom's credit cards and in a very short period of time had run up over $30,000 of expenses of her own uh, that we had to get control of. And in that case, we were able to get the daughter, the son, and, and other family members in. The daughter acknowledged that she had not understood her role, and we had her sign a promissory note to pay back that money so that the estate was not deprived of it. But it could very easily have turned into an elder abuse type situation where adult protective services would have gotten involved. And then after death, sometimes the person who assumes that caregiving role now thinks that they're entitled to a greater share of the estate when mom or dad are gone just simply by having that loving relationship of taking care of the parent. That's true and one of the problems we've seen quite often is that child will take the parent to his or her own attorney and have the estate plan redone. Uh, we had a case fairly recently where mom had lived with one of the daughters for six years and everything was wonderful. Then the daughter in Oklahoma, this was in Texas, the daughter in Oklahoma said, I'd like to have mom come up and stay with me. She's ill and she's got friends up here. And so mom comes up, daughter immediately takes her in, has mom rewrite her trust to make her the sole beneficiary. Six months later, mom passes away and now the rest of the family finds out they've been disinherited. Yeah. Well, it's a real challenge. The other thing that we talked about at this conference, and it was so terrific, there were about 230 people attended ballpark, and um, many great speakers, and, and the people that were on the panel with you shared some good perspectives too. Absolutely. Including the gentleman that is actually an Alzheimer's victim. That's great. And, and another lady whose husband was. So uh, it really gave, gave us uh, a deep sense of appreciation about the challenges that they do face. The other question that comes up is sometimes and this, this point was made to us by another attendee, which is that sometimes the children become angry over having to care for mom and dad. What's been, have you seen that happen from time to time? <laughs> Boy, do we often. Uh, you know, it always, it, it seems to come down to the good child, bad child scenario, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way, but uh, there's one child that becomes responsible, however that happens for taking care of that Alzheimer's patient. And the other children are hands off. And so the one child is tied down, you know, 24 seven without respite. And the other children say, well, you wanted her, you took it on. Uh, so you're responsible. And, and that can create a lot of, of stress and disharmony, not only between the siblings, but between that child who now feels like he or she's being taken advantage of, and the parent they're taking taking care of. So it's a very difficult situation. And I've, I've counseled families to make those arrangements in writing. Say, you know, I'm willing to move in with mom or have mom move in with me, but this is how it's gonna work. You know, either we pay for somebody one day a week 
to come in and give me some respite or we make arrangements to put them in a senior center, an adult take care center, one or two days a week, or you have to step up to the plate and cover, because that needs to be clarified up front. And the other issue is, should that child get some sort of special recognition, financial recognition for doing that? And we have to be very careful about that, because if you don't have a, a pre-approved family caregiver agreement, that says that you're entitled to reasonable compensation. If that parent has to go into the nursing home, Adult Protective Services and DHS are gonna come in and say that was a wrongful transfer because providing for a parent is a gift and you shouldn't be paid for it unless you can show that there was a need for that care, that that care kept them out of the nursing home and that the compensation was fair and reasonable. And we always run those past the Department of Human Services in advance to be sure that we're not going to have any issues with their enforceability. So what I hear you saying is, reading between the lines, is that if you if you go if, if you plan properly and address those financial issues, you reduce the risk that maybe some child may develop this sense of entitlement exactly. after the fact or after the death. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, when you go through that planning process, then the child caregiver has total clarity about what this responsibility entails. Because many of them just don't understand the stress it's going to put on their own lives to do that. Well, it was a great conference, and I appreciate you being uh, it, it was wonderful. The expert on the panel. Uh, I, I've got to tell you, that panel was outstanding. We had a, a gerontologist physician that knew her stuff. We had uh, the program director for the Arkansas, Oklahoma uh, Alzheimer's Association. Uh, we had a, a person that actually suffered from Alzheimer's and a woman who had provided care for Alzheimer's families, uh, four or five or six different members of her own family who had encountered that. So any question that was asked in that forum, somebody had the answer. And, and I learned probably more than I was able to convey to other people. So uh, we look forward to more of these experiences and we've told the Alzheimer's Association we're available to assist them whenever the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, we'll be helping them more and more. So if any of you listening to this or watching have questions, we offer a complimentary consultation for those families who are interested, interested in elder care issues and how to best protect your family. You can reach us at 405-843-6100.